For our paste for the macaron, we are going to need 150 grams of almond flour, 150 grams of icing sugar, 55 grams of egg whites. For the meringue, we are going to use 150 grams of granulated sugar, 35 grams of water, 55 grams of egg whites, and 1 teaspoon of cream of tartar. In a bowl that has been wiped down with white vinegar, we are going to add our 55 grams of egg whites. To this, we are also going to add our 150 grams of almond flour. We then are going to add our 150 grams of icing sugar. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to mix this until we form a paste. And this is where you begin your arm workout. <laughs> What we are looking for is that there are no clumps of almond flour or bits of sifted icing sugar. What we really are looking for is that everything is really mixed up into one homogeneous mixture, which simply just means that every single thing has now formed into one single paste. We are going to cover our paste in plastic wrap. We're just going to make sure that it's covered so that the little moisture that there is, we don't want it to escape. So just make sure that it goes all the way down to cover as much as you possibly can. Now we're going to get a saucepan. Inside, we're going to put our 35 grams of water. We are then going to pour our 150 grams of sugar, and we're going to try our best to aim in the middle of the saucepan. So for 55 grams of egg whites, we are eventually going to, later on, put in our teaspoon of cream of tartar. Right now what we're going to do is set up our sand mixer to a level 4, which is going to be the medium low speed. At the same time, we are going to start putting them on medium, our sugar mixture. We are going to put a timer or a stopwatch and we're going to keep our eyes on 3 minutes. So after about three minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to stop our stand mixture and we're going to make sure we pour our cream of tartar right inside the middle to make sure that all of it gets inside of our egg whites. Then we are going to just put it back up to a level four.
So what we are starting to see, we're starting to see little bubbles towards the edge, which means that I now have to put a little bit more attention to the sugar mixture. This syrup mixture, because it's going to get hot pretty fast. So that's why you just kind of got to keep an eye on it. We want it more of a bit of more of a simmer before I start checking for that first 150 degrees Celsius. So now what we could see here is that there is more of a simmer. I'm just going to place the thermometer towards the middle without placing it towards the bottom completely. I am keeping my eyes out for that 150 degrees Celsius. We're almost there. So it's really important because the temperature does change pretty quick. So just keep your eyes open. So now we can see that the color has changed to a more clear color. So I am now reaching 110 degrees Celsius. Now 113 degrees Celsius. One hundred fourteen degrees Celsius and one hundred fifteen degrees Celsius. Now, with that, we're going to turn our stand mixer to a level six, and we're going to wait for one hundred and seventeen degrees Celsius, which is now. So we're going to see it does go to one eighteen degrees Celsius. So stop that there. Now we're going to pour in our sugar mixture right towards the side and we're going to count for approximately 30 seconds. Try your best to make it be a kind of same speed stream. Then we're going to leave it at this speed for a total of three minutes. So after the three minutes, we're going to turn the mixer all the way off. We're going to lift up that top part of the mixer and you're going to be able to see our beautiful meringue. This is our meringue. What we need to do now is that we're going to clean up the sides without getting that kind of crystallized sugar on the side. This is important that we clean the whisk as much as we can to take our beautiful meringue out. The important thing here is that we kind of have a better idea of how much meringue we have in total. We are going to start placing our meringue into our paste in thirds. Here we have our paste. We're going to take off that plastic wrap and put that aside. We are going to take approximately one third of our meringue. We are going to put it inside. So now the magical number here is 20. 20 stirs. The first one is going to be difficult, but we're going to switch through the middle and make a rotation and then we're going to try to pull everything down and so that's two and down now before you get to 20 after 15 stirs what you're going to want to do is to get a butter knife and you're going to want to scrape everything you have off of your spatula just to make sure that all the meringue and the paste is equally mixed in. So this, I'm going to show you now what I mean. 
So here you could see a lot of the paste that wasn't mixed in and same with that meringue. So we're just going to make sure our spatula is nice and clean and the same thing goes with our bowl. So we started seeing here that it's mostly all mixed in and I counted for a total of 20 stirs. So this is the second set of 20 stirs. And now this is the third set of 20 stirs. So now with this last set, I'm going to add all of the remaining meringue. So now we have added the, re the remaining meringue and we stirred for a total of 10 times in this last set. And now we're going to take off and clean our spatula. Now, as you have noticed, this last process I said that we stirred for only 10 times. This last set is going to be for a total of 15. So the numbers that I use in regards to stirring for the sets are 20 stirs, 20 stirs, and 15, and I'll explain why. So now remember, we're going to right now together mix it up for the last five stirs. To remember, slash down and we're going to go around picking up everything at the bottom. So this is four and this is five. Okay, so now you see that it's all mostly together. There are some parts with meringue, but that's fine. Most of it is kind of, it's all come together. And now I'm just really, it's really looking very, very nice. So the reason why I stop here is because now we're going to do is that we're going to split this batter into maximum five different colors. That's as much as I have done. So what we're going to do now is that here I have prepared some bowls with plastic wrap on top. And I'll explain why in a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try our best to evenly separate our batter. And what I like to do is I'm going to do three different ones. So I'm going to split it up into thirds. There you go, that's one third. So since I'm going to be working with all three, while I work with one, I'm going to cover all the other ones because with the plastic wrap, because this is going to help it not dry up. So we're going to take one of those mixtures and what we're going to do is that we're going to add one drop of food coloring, liquid food coloring. Now I'm going to add black so I can make a gray color. So I'm gonna do the same process as I did before. You're going to split it towards the middle and you're just going to count 15 stirs as a start. Now it's very also important that I like to say every five stirs you're going to try to check the consistencies. So again you're going to check at five stirs, ten stirs, and then if need be 15 stirs. So this is after 10 stirs. So what we're looking for is two number eights. That, and what I mean by that is that the batter that is falling from your spatula to your bowl doesn't break. And therefore you could kind of pour it in a number eight figure. If it can do so without breaking for a total of two number eights, then it's a good indicator that it's ready. So now with the, the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to pour as much of this delicious macaron batter as we possibly can into our plastic wrap. Now remember, this was the same plastic wrap that covered this bowl. So that's why we're trying to be careful with our plastic wrap because it has multiple purposes.
Okay, now we are going to kind of close it like a little burrito. So you're going to push it lengthwise a little bit like that. Making sure everything is safe inside because this really does prevent it from drying out. Then you're going to turn it around and you're good to go. So here we have a Welton 1A piping tip inside of a piping bag. We are going to take now one of our macaron burritos and we're going to cut um, one end of it and we're going to place it inside. We need to really make sure we try our hardest to pipe at a 90 degree angle and we just go on and we can start our piping. So this next part is very important. So we're going to tap our baking tray. I really like to put um, a little cloth at the bottom so it doesn't make too much noise. And we're just gonna let it fall. One, two, three, four. This process is very important because that allows any air bubbles that are towards the bottom to rise towards the surface. Because now, after tapping, we're just gonna go and pick out any air bubbles using a toothpick or if you have a scribe or even like I'm using here if you have um, a cake checker to check if they're done um, you can use that as well and that's it now it's done next step so the next step is leaving them to rest these, for instance, these have been resting for 30 minutes. We know that they're ready to bake when you can pass your finger lightly and it's all completely dry. They're no longer sticky. So with that, we're going to put them in the oven. Now the temperature and the amount of time to bake varies by ovens. For these, with this oven, I use the temperature of 330 degrees for a total of 16 minutes. Now with the new oven I have, I put them in for 310 degrees for a total of 18 minutes. So all you have to do after that is close the door and put the timer on. So now, after they've baked, it's really important to wait at least 30 minutes after they come out so they can peel off really nicely and they're cool and they don't get stuck to the bottom. Here you can see the nice little feet, nice and soft bottom. And we're going to open one up to see the inside. So here you can see that it's full all the way at the bottom. It has a really nice feet. And yeah, there you go. Enjoy.